All right, everyone, let's take a look at this. Factor out the greatest common factor, the GCF for short. The important thing to remember about factoring of any kind is that it's the reverse of multiplication. So when we're factoring out the greatest common factor, the result is going to look like a product, a multiplication. In particular, it's going to look like the product of whatever that greatest common factor is, and I'll show you how to find it, times something. So it's going to be the product of two things. It could be more than two, but for now it's just going to be two things. All right, so our job is to figure out what is the GCF of, in this case, 15y to the fourth minus 24y to the sixth, and then what's the something that goes in parentheses. So let's take first finding the GCF. We have to look at the two terms in this case. There may be more than two terms, but for now, these two terms, and look at the coefficients, 15 and 24. What's the greatest common factor of 15 and 24? In other words, what's the biggest number that can divide into both? Now, most of the time, you, you, you'll be able to just look at this and tell. Like, you can probably look at this and say, well, it's going to be 3. But when the numbers get bigger, you might not know right off the bat. So one method that will always, always work for you is to take each of the numbers and to prime factor it, break it down into the product of prime numbers. So 15, for example, would be 3 times 5. And then 24 would be 3 times 8, but 8 can be written as 4 times 2. So what's common to these two things? Well, 3 is the only factor that's common to both of those terms. So that tells us the greatest common factor will include the number 3. All right, what about the variable? you got y to the 4th and y to the 6th. So y to the 4th, do the same thing. Break it down as y times itself 4 times, and y to the 6th, break it down, is y times itself six times. Now, you're not going to do this each time. I'm going to show you a sh shortcut. But just so you'll understand, when I break it down like this, I can see that y to the fourth is what they have in common. This guy has two additional ones, but this guy only has four y's, and this guy has at least four y's. So the f GCF will include y to the fourth. Now, you can notice that without even breaking it down into the individual factors, I could look at the exponents, and I took the exponent that was the smallest, which sounds kind of contradictory because I'm looking for the greatest common factor, but the more important word is common. What's the greatest common factor? Well, y to the fourth. All right? Now, we got that down, so we want to write down 3y to the fourth times, remember, something. Now, to figure out what goes inside the parentheses, right? The, uh, factoring is the reverse of multiplication. So think about what's the opposite of the operation multiplication. Well, it's division. So if I take that GCF and divide that into each one of these terms, so take the GCF and divide it into the 15y to the fourth, also divide it into 24y to the sixth, that's going to tell us what goes inside the parentheses. So what do we get? 15 divided by 3 is uh, 5. y to the 4th over y to the 4th cancels out completely. So, done with that one. Just bring down the sign. 24 divided by 3 is 8. y to the 6th divided by y to the 4th is y squared. So our answer then is 3y to the 4th times 5 minus 8y squared. Now, a quick check is always a good idea. If we distribute the 3y to the 4th through the parentheses, we should get back to the original problem, which it looks like we do. 3 times 5 is 15. y to the 4th, there's no additional y, so it's just going to be 15y to the 4th for the first term. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. y to the 4th times y squared is y to the 6th. So that checks out. So this is the correct way to factor out the GCF from that original polynomial.